Hello, my name is Cecilia Segura, and I'm going to be telling you about Christine Jordanson and her story through the media and significance on the LGBTQ community. Who is Christine Jordanson? On the picture on the right, we see Christine Jordanson, 1942, at a press conference. It looks like with all the microphones right in front of her, we can tell that she's very much seen in the media at this time. And why can she be seen in the media at this time? She had a gender reassignment surgery from a male to a female before surgeries were allowed in the United States, which is a huge, huge deal. But there are other factors that I'll get into. So here's a little bit of the backstory. May 30th, 1926, George jo Georgenson was born. In 1948, Harry Benjamin was his first transsexual patient, has his first transsexual patient. Harry Benjamin became a hero for the many 1,500 transsexual patients he visited in his long medical career, Vicente 2021. But there was one particular patient that striked his notice. Popularity of this patient, number seven, Christine, formerly George Jordanson, who became an instant celebrity, went on the 1st of December, 1952, the Daily News announced on its front page, XGI becomes blonde beauty. Operations transform Bronx youth, Vicente 2021. So before that celebrity came out in 1951, she, George, aka now Christine, traveled to Denmark to receive hormonal replacement therapy and surgeries. Then, fast forward to December 1st, 1952, Christine Jordanson becomes a celebrity. February 1953, the first story came out about Christine Jordanson on the American Weekly. So as we can see, she has a lot of media coverage already within, between the first two years. And in 1970s, surgical and hormonal procedures became legal in the United States. So why the, all the media coverage, you may ask. On the picture to the right, we see Daily News' coverage from December 1st, having its front cover be XGI Becomes Blonde Beauty that I explained in the previous slide. Georgeson remains in the news throughout the 1950s as she appeared on television, talk shows, and even starred in her own nightclub show. And her 1967 autobiography was adapted and released as a motion picture titled The Christine Georgenson Story in 1970, Skidmore, 2011. So if we look on the left-hand side, in April 1966, Delicia Newton was an African-American trans woman and appeared on Sepia magazine. But on this magazine, Sepia's coverage of Newton highlighted her lonely childhood and her very desire to be one day a good wife, Skidmore 2011. So Sepia Magazine highlighted Delicia Newton as a woman who was very lonely, um, very bad coverage, as you can see. But also, Newton's story appeared only in African-American press and tabloid newspapers such as National Insider, Skidmore 2011. But if you look at versus Christine, you see February 1953, the San Francisco Examiner reported, Christine is not only female, she's a darn good looking female. She's tall, very blonde and chic. Skidmore 2011. So reading this quote, you think, well, back in the old times, all, they, all men wanted was for a woman to be tall, blonde and chic. And that's what women wanted as well because that was the beauty standard at the time. So, of course, they're going to cover this beautiful blonde that used to be a male. But in 1970s, Christine told the Washington Post, unlike other women, I have to become super female. I couldn't have a masculine trait. Skidmore 2011. So this meaning that Christine even felt that herself, that she had to become this super female. She could have any masculine traits like before. She really wanted to become this person that was basically tall, blonde, and chic. Therefore, the phrase blonde beauty stimul stimulously aligned Jordanson's body with an idealized 
femininity and asserted her desirability as a woman to assume male viewer. Skidmore, 2011. So media and also where we see a change happen. So in March 1959, Christine Jordanson applied for a marriage license with her fiance, Howard J. Knox. And the city clerk, Germany Katz, with six staff attorneys, eventually pointed to Georgian's birth certificate, which stated her sex, male, Merowitz, 2004. So her birth certificate stated male, while her passport stated female. A letter from her doctor, Harry Benjamin, also stated that she must be considered female. The New York City refused to give her her marriage license along with her fiance. Here comes out another media coverage from the New York Times that states, on April 4th, the New York Times describes the situation. Christine Jorgensen, an entertainer, was denied a marriage license yesterday on the ground of inadequate proof of being a female. Merowitz 2004. So here's yet another media coverage of Christine. Her lawyer promised to petition the New York Board of Health to switch her birth certificate, but it was a little too late because soon Christine and her fiance split. There was no more media attention on this topic afterwards. This leads me to my next point in LGBTQ history in the United States. I'd like to start off with this quote that says, LGBTQ history is an umbrella term that captures a story of strength and struggles of diverse individuals, cultures, and communities that have been considered non-normative, Springgate 2016. So its study through history is very cultural, it's very social, it has a lot of legal politics that comes in between the history of the United States and the LGBTQ community. But all the community really wants is the right to live, the right to love, and the right to be able to thrive. And I connected this to Christine Jordanson because that's what she did for the LGBTQ community. She stepped out and helped others have the right to live and love and be able to thrive. So that is why I wanted to add the history in the United States into Christine Jordanson's story. So here we see the rising amounts of gender reassignment surgery. I included a picture on the right and on the left of the picture, it says before, which is George Jordanson, and on the right, which is Christine Jordanson. This is what a gender reassignment surgery is. Christine Jordanson got a gender reassignment surgery and has a huge significance for the LGBTQ community today because she stepped out, this is what she wanted, she got it, and a lot of people were able to see who she was after the reassignment surgery and who she wanted to be most importantly. So I would like to describe sex versus gender. Sex are home hormones, chromosomes, and organs, body parts especially, and gender is a social contract, cultural expectation of oneself. And um, gender reassignment surgery is a surgical procedure that turns your sex into the other sex. And this can also include hormonal replacement therapy that along goes with the surgery as well. And lastly, we have gender dysorphia, previously known as gender identity disorder. And this is having a dissatisfaction of your sex and wanting to change it. And gender reassignment surgery has helped many patients with gender dysmorphia. So as we see in the 21st century with its transforming ideology and rising acceptance is witnessing an increased number of transgender people applying for gender reassignment surgeries, GRS. Michelle et al, 2021. So more and more people these days are getting gender reassignment surgeries. And I would like to think that Christine Jordanson was the face for this and wanted more people to start coming out with her as well. Though GRS is becoming popular and more acceptable, there is still a relative lack of awareness of the process and its associated challenges amongst healthcare professionals. Michelle et al, 2021. So although it's getting still very, very popular, um, even healthcare professionals still have a lot of work to do with creating the gender reassignment surgeries and making it um, a good and effective surgery for the people that want to get it done. 
So next, I would like to talk about the U.S. states providing Medicaid coverage today. Although Christine Jordanson's stories happened back in the 1900s, I want to talk about today what is happening because history evolves and this is what today's history is. So why is this important? It's important because expenses in the LGBT community should not be denied, especially with people with low income should not be turned down to be who they want to be because of expenses. And Christine Jordanson helped make this happen due to her stepping out and having a surgery. In 2013, California became the first state to issue policies that explicitly included coverage for gender transition related health care under its state's Medicaid program. Zelensky et al. 2021. So California was the very first one that gave Medicaid coverage. Some key terms that I want to explain with you are GAHT, gender affirming hormone therapy, and GAS, gender affirming surgery. So Christine Jordison actually had both of these done, which um, is why I can tie this in to my presentation. So there's two maps and the first map shows which states are covering gender affirming hormone therapy versus which are not today in these times. And the second map shows which states are covering gender affirming surgeries versus which are not. So this is map number one and the green states are the ones that have covered benefits for GAHT and the red states are the ones that, have, that do not cover. GHT. And the kind of gray states are intermediate. They're still undecided as of whether they not, whether or not they want to cover GAHT. This is the second map. And as we can see, there's a lot more states that do not cover GAS. So there's probably about 50-50. And there's also four states that are unable to confirm coverage of GAS. In conclusion, Christine Jordanson was the face of media as an ex-GI becomes a blonde beauty. Her media was presented on many, many platforms, but what was this due to? It was due to her beauty, beauty standard at, at that time, tall, blonde, and sexy, and her race plays a big standard, is this, a standard in this as well. She's refused a marriage license, yet another media coverage, but this also becomes history as well. I also described the LGBTQ history in the United States and how Christine Jordanson is one of the influential faces of that today in history. The continuous, continuing rising of gender reassignment surgery is another thing I talked about because it is becoming very, very more popular in the 21st century. And Christine Jordanson helps her community by doing this because she has had the same thing done to her as well. And lastly, I talked about how the United States provides Medicaid cover coverage today for the LGBTQ community. And I did this by showing two graphs of which states provided and did not provide coverage for GAHT and GAS. So that was my presentation. Here are my references and thank you.